Okay, throw in a little genetic algorithm here. A little finite element method here. And I think that should do it. Nailed it. I decided to take a little bit of a break from the senior thesis project today, but I still feel like coding, just not that. So I thought today would be kind of fun to show everyone how uh, I go about taking derivatives numerically. Taking derivatives numerically is really cool because it really sends you back to Calc 1, like how you were taught to take derivatives before they showed you things like power rule and things like that. So right now I'm going to go into a gentle little reminder of what a derivative is on paper, and then we're going to see how to apply it numerically. Cool. So if you don't remember from Calc 1, the definition they always give you first for a derivative is if you have some function f of x, we define f prime of x equal to the limit, that's h goes to zero, f of x plus h, Okay, so this is the textbook definition of a derivative. And what does that mean? Well, we can draw out exactly what I mean here. Say that we're given some function f of x that looks something like this. Okay. Well, x is just going to be some point, right? At some point along the x-axis. Let me label my axes. So say we have some point here that is x. Well, there's a corresponding point up here on the y-axis, which is f of x. Not to be confused with the actual function. This is x being an actual point, not the function f as a function of x. Okay, and then say we add some distance to it here, where this is going to be, this distance here is h. That's our increment. Well, the x value associated with it is just going to be x plus the distance, so it's x plus h. And likewise, this has its corresponding y value here, which is going to be f evaluated at x plus h. And in elementary school, or maybe middle school, you learned that the slope of a line is the same thing as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, here all we're doing is we're expressing it a little bit differently because our, our y2 is just going to be our f of x plus h. And our x1 is going to be f of x, right? This is our first point divided by x2 minus x1. Well, x2 is x plus h, and uh, x1 is x, so we're getting x plus h minus x, which is equal to h. That equals the slope of a line. Now, the thing with this, the slope that this is calculating is actually the slope of what's called a secant line. It's going to be a line that crosses, that can cross the graph at two points. Now, if we allow this h here to get really, really small, meaning the difference between x plus h and x becomes really, really small, what this slope of a secant line becomes and approaches is the slope of a tangent line. And what, So what I'm saying is if we just take the limit as h goes to zero here, instead of getting that graph that we just had or that slope that we just had, what it becomes is the slope of a tangent line. So that's the, defi that's the geometric definition of a derivative. Uh, and this is actually the definition that you end up using whenever you want to program a derivative. Now what you can then do after that is you can take those slopes, those slopes at points, the slopes of tangent lines at points of x, and you can plot those points against those same x values. And that's what you get as the function, the functional representation of the derivative. So if you were to find all the slope of the points of, say, uh, a sine wave, the slope of the tangent points at any point on a sine wave, and plot those against the same x values, you'd get a cosine wave. Um, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how to implement that kind of thought process numerically. 
So in order to start the code off, what I need to do is I need to import some of the necessary libraries that I'm going to be using throughout the code. And remember, this is all going to be done in Python, but it would be extremely similar to do something like this in, say, C++. Import numpy as np. The as parts just means I don't want to keep writing numpy, so I'm going to write np instead. And the same thing goes with this one. So math is so that I can use things like pi or e if I wanted to, and I don't have to write out pi equals 3.14, you know what I'm saying? Uh, NumPy will help me create an array, and matplotlib is the standard plotting library that you use in Python. So remember, we want to take a derivative of some function f of x at points x, at some x values. Well, the first thing to do is define what x values those are. So if I create some array, let's say from 0 to 4 times math.pi, uh, so our x interval is going from 0 to 4 pi, and I want to specify how many points I'm going to be using, how many function evaluations I'm going to be using. So let's call that n, and before that, let's define what n is. Let's make it 10,000 points. Why not? So this is the number of function evaluations. And if we're going from 0 to 4 pi uh, with 10,000 points, the distance between each points that we're going to call h is just going to equal 4 pi divided by n, and I'm going to multiply this by 1.0 just so that Python doesn't expect this answer to be an integer and freak out. So we defined our x values, now let's define our function. So if we define f of x equal to, um, let's say val equals math dot sine of x, doesn't have to say val, it could be anything. This is just the shorthand saying that this is what my y value is equal to. And I want it to keep track of what that is. So I'm going to return val. Next thing I'm going to do is define a function to uh, evaluate what the derivative of f of x is. So I'm going to say define, let's call it f prime of x. And we're essentially going to use the same equation, the same derivative equation from before but without the limit as h goes to zero because we're using a specified h. We're choosing one that's sufficiently close to zero. So let's say new val is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x. And then all of this is over h. It might be a little unorthodox to create a function and then call a function inside of another function, but this is just to make it painfully clear where each step of the program's execution is taking place. Because so we could have just taken care of this whole part inside of some for loop, but again, I think that this just paints a better picture of what's going on. Um, now, going back to the x values that we've defined, we're going from 0 to 4 pi again, but we haven't used that anywhere yet. So if we think about what our x values are, we're starting from 0, going to 4 pi, 10,000 points. So the first point of that should be 0. The next point should be 0 plus h. And then the next point plus h, so 2h, 3h, so on until we get to 4 pi. And there will be 10,000 points in this array. So the next thing that we need to do is evaluate f prime at all of these points. Now since I know how many points there are, I'm just going to do a for loop and say for i in xvals, I want to evaluate f prime at those x values. So we'll call it derivative is equal to f prime evaluated at i. And then, so this is automatically going to start evaluating the derivative, and then it's sort of just going to throw that information away, and I don't want it to do that. 
I want it to store that information somewhere. So let's create another list, YVALS. And this is just going to be an empty list. And what we're going to do to this list is we're going to continuously add those evaluations to the list. So we'll say yvals.append derivative. So it's saying after each iteration of the loop finishes, add what you got to that list. And what we could do also is do another for loop here. And let's keep track of what the actual function evaluations are. Function. So let's create another list for the function. We'll call it fvals. Okay, so fvals. So the the y vowels are going to correspond to the y values associated with the derivative and f vals is going to correspond to the y values associated with just sine of x. And what we're going to do now is we're going to plot what all this looks like. So plt.plot and then we put in our dependent and independent variables, independent being x vals, dependent being y vals. plt.plow, yeah, no, don't do that. And then we're also going to do plt.plot xvals and fvals. So the first one, this is going to be plotting derivative. And this one's just going to be plotting sine. Let's throw in some grid lines in there to make it look a little bit pretty. A title. Okay, and the last thing is I'm going to change the color of the second graph, that way we know exactly what it should look like. So we'll say, uh, let's make this red. And then the other one, so the derivative graph should be in blue. And as long as I didn't mess anything up, this should evaluate. Could be missing a semicolon somewhere, it looks good. Okay, let's see what this looks like. PLTT, okay, great, so PLT. Really, I messed up on the last line, awesome. There we go. And so OBS is a little bit weird when it comes to screen recording other windows, I haven't figured out how to do that yet, but here's the plot of what it looks like as taken from my Python code. And as you can see, the function in red is the sine function and the function in dupe and the function in blue corresponds to the derivative of the sine, which is cosine. Should be no shocker there. Um, so this was just a nice, quick way of figuring out how to calculate derivatives using the definition that everyone's learned in Calc 1, but you never really use again until you realize that it's actually really useful in numerical methods. So uh, there are other libraries I'm sure you could import that would give you a functional representation because that's not what this did, right? It didn't say, hey, by the way, this is cosine of x. What we did was we looked at the graph and you could see that it looks like the cosine of x. So there are other libraries that you could import that would help uh, tell you what the function is or you could do the same thing in like Mathematica, but that kind of defeats the purpose. Um, so I hope you guys found this helpful or interesting and maybe a little bit as uh, it might entice you to go learn how to apply numerical methods yourself a little bit more. And it was definitely good for me because I got to procrastinate. Um, so if you thought if you liked it, let me know in the comment section. We'll see you guys there.